So this is generally what is referenced or looked at in terms of the apocryphon, apocryphon, where the boundaries of the mind dissolve and the perceptual system is unveiled as a projection system and the underlying reality comes to the forefront of consciousness which is in a way like the uh, foreground and the background are switched and that's actually what happens like uh, possibly even the mind calendar which is still a part of the projection system but where the short-term and the long-term memory becomes switched or the the um conscious and unconscious mind change places and then one is pretty much moved behind the projector screen or more so the projector uh, system itself instead of being on the screen. And there's even an, a metaphorical <laughs> or an analogous analogous um, correspondence to moving behind the projector screen, meaning you'd be like going behind the movie theater screen instead of forward or in that way backwards, okay, reverting the inversion and moving into the projector film strip or really just the, project, uh, the, the film strip, but actually moving into the projector, imagine moving further away from the source into the behind the screen area, like the background area where people clean and spray trash and stuff. And that's kind of like moving into the abyssal plane instead of moving inward, back inward towards the source. <coughs> and uh, the idea is though, that time and space and the forward leaning organization or orientation of consciousness and matter, they become dissolved or there's a disillusion of that order. And it's because that order is based upon something temporary, a temporary discourse into a section, segment of an eternal story that we call our subjective experience from an objective perspective. And so, and it's really, we see it from an objective or a subjective perspective now. It's as if we move instantly outside the projection system and inside it because we see how we appear objectively from a true standpoint and as well we move into a true subjective standpoint as if we're viewing through every single cell in the body and we're seeing in a way that we couldn't have access to before. But it brings the question about where, where are we now seeing it from the conscious perspective which seemingly has access to the experience element of existence yet the pure observational element of truth beyond the perceptual filtration system is, is seemingly difficult to get to or restricted from view, meaning the subjective experience that we think we have access to now, which tells us the most about what's going on and what's really happening, and we're in the seat of the car now looking out where's the best view, well that windshield and all the side mirrors and all the dials and gauges, they're biased. They're filtering what's actually there, and they're giving us a filtered view, which actually isn't the truest potential view, and if we were to get out of the car, or if we were to go into the engine bay and tinker around mentally with all that is taking place, only then could we actually see what is truly happening, truly taking place. And in that way, And in that way, from the seat of the car is the only perspective which lacks the totality of view. And that from either angle, outside the car or inside, 
the engine and the tires and all of that is the only way we could actually gain a more direct view. And so it's a strange situation, but in that way, we're the midwayer to the higher and the lower level, the inner and the outer, the truly objective and the truly subjective. And uh, the point is reckon bringing about a reckoning of the two so that the system becomes whole again. In that, as we are now, through this Gnostic, demiurgic amnesia, a kind of battle of consciousness, there's a split between the life and death, or birth and realization of fulfillment process, and humanity doesn't know themselves, and in that sense they're not actually in control. Still, Again, we're multiple layers deep in simulation where control in itself may be an illusion. But how powerful is the illusion if it's strong enough to take our power away through convincing us that someone else has control or by returning power to us if we can convince ourselves that we are back in control. So it's still an illusion, but illusion is just another word for all that is, the Maya and so on but as well. The, the ultimate is leaving that kind of projection system altogether where illusion falls away. But for that to happen, the version of the self that is only present through that illusion, okay, that falsified midwayer that truly believes that's the only view that version must basically die, it must be undone. Because it can't exist, it can't continue to exist if the truth is to be known. And that's the whole concept of the Apocryphon, I think I'm saying that wrong, <laughs> of the concept of what is and what happens and how all this plays out. It's kind of like the, uh, the person, in a way, getting ejected from the car as soon as they realize what the car actually is, that the boundaries no longer apply, and therefore they can't possibly continue to remain in the car unless they're projecting, unless they're projecting themselves there with every conscious waking moment, which again may be the nature of what is that some then develop the capacity to continually recreate their environment around them consciously and in that sense becoming conscious creators of their presence here even if temporarily just to use that as a to maintain a connection to those that they seek or maybe those who they seek to wake up, or those who seek to wake up, because then that's really their, their true family, because those are really the people who can understand one another. I was writing, and in that sense, the, uh, the inner and the outer, the car basically turning into pieces which are then part of a projection system which uh, becomes no longer defined or, or as distinct maybe in separation of one layer to the other when it becomes fully realized meaning the driver the vehicle and the external uh, third person objective view the space outside the windshield pretty much become the same system 
Now this is also connected to a basically a kind of artificial oneness generated through artificial synchronicity and the kind of pseudo mysticism which is pretty much the universe attempting to convince us that we're one with it so that it can swallow our consciousness whole and if one can stand up to the entire universe attempting to basically replicate them and convince them to identify with it then they become a universe of information worth of uniqueness that can't be replicated then and so it's kind of a this borderline there but the idea as well is that uh, the idea of basically a uh, death can be reflected as passing into the underworld which could be seen as much as passing into the interior of that vehicle that uh, the internal view basically going into your cells and bowels and the underlying order of your being and in that sense moving into that other layer of consciousness where if one doesn't know how to organ uh, basically organize themselves orient themselves and therefore navigate through these layers it is as if they become lost in a beast in a labyrinth and there's some knowledge about that with the uh the dragon representing frank burrell 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 talked about this the dragon the the coiled uh well not the coiled serpent but the uh the uh the, the snake-like dragon representing the intestines and that basically one's in digestive health relating to their spiritual wakefulness and their ability to orient and navigate those layers both in life basically in life reflects into the ability to navigate those layers uh quote afterlife and that one who basically disrespects and, and generates disharmony in all these layers is going to experience basically being their cells their intestinal cells being lost if you will being um tormented burning trying to get the nutrients they need but not being able to to receive that basically being lost from a cellular perspective because they're experiencing the the impact they had on the body from a in that way a subjective view but in this way inside the body so it's kind of like being objective because you're seeing what actually went on whereas what we have now thinking that it's it's subjective it's a projection because we only see perception if you will per perception and, and sensory input and in a way imagination and so we're creating what we want to see we're seeing what we want to see if we feel good because we ate a certain way unless you're calculating unless you're really thinking and withdrawing neutralizing and purely observing you're, you're just going off of taste buds or what you see on the sign telling you what you want to eat that version of, of, of subjective awareness is basically holographic uh, illusion meaning it can be implemented from externally it can be shined in or shown in shown in shined shown in through these perceptual systems and in that sense it's actually like a filtration system a series of projectors with different colored lenses and it's not actually showing what's there the basis of what that perceptual system does is it cuts out different frequencies of light just like different colored lenses and it shows you by extracting information and then giving you the leftover so it's inherently a negative imprint system it's through showing shadows whether they're different versions of color and light or different shapes and and um depth uh, contrast of light and brightness and darkness it's still extracting or filtering out some information and showing you just what it leaves and so it's a seemingly a vast array of different basically panorama uh, scenarios frequency spectrums but the one connection between it all is that it's filtering what's actually there into its own unique version of not the whole truth and that's what it is based upon so 
it's wonderful if uh, wonderful it's the uh it's full of wonder meaning it could make you question reality you know to a very high degree but the idea is it's inherently based upon the lack of the whole picture or the the restriction of the whole picture the filtration of the whole picture and in that way each person is unique their body is unique in filtering their their mind and so it's a development of a, a bias system and so what you're seeing is not the world through these eyes the physical eyes what you're seeing is yourself and how you particularly shaped and, and developed this physical system to accept one bias or another kind and that that's your unique version and you're seeing yourself invisibly so because the materials that you see are through that refractive filtration process but it's the unique version of how it's filtering of how and what specific information is being left out that describes who you are and your level of advancement and and so on your adherence to one or the other or another version of truth and so again it's like that mirror dimensional reflector translation system where it's not what you're seeing but it's the process of how it got there that's actually describing who's there and in that way, it's the essence, it's the, the nature, the personality through that process, not the information that's being transferred. It's the, uh, the relationship between the flow of information. So it's very interesting. But in that sense, it's like a dimensional translation system. And in that sense, it's like a dimensional waking system, a, a, an awakening system. But then it brings the question of why are we asleep in the first place? And then we are asleep in the first place because we're in this dimension would we be in this dimension if we were not in the body and so that's the whole kind of idea of the body being the plug into the artificial construct the dimension like neo waking up out of the matrix with the tap lining uh injection ports flying out of the the different uh parts of the spine i can't think of the word and um that representing different energy layers meridians or chakra systems that are actually there as ports for the system to extract energy from the body but it can only do it to a body that has a soul in it and so it's a very very complex system but still within that that sense the goal is not to be lost in the 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 lower form and uh, but it might also not be to simply mm, to destroy the lower form you know, cutting yourself off from the lower might be uh, not only just like a cop-out, but it might not give you the, the required knowledge, the power to nullify any instance of that happening again. The point is to become impervious to the tricks of that lower dimensional system so that you can navigate basically up Shit's Creek if you have to, and so you can more or less stop it from happening before it happens if it somehow begins to happen again the other aspect is it can never happen again because it's a one-time thing that this can happen that a universe of all that is can be deviated into all that isn't you can't have a filtration system that rises and falls ever again in this degree you can only have subsections of that which are like little daydreams this is the big daydream this is the big dreaming everything in the universe is doing it as far as everything that's here this is there's nothing here that's actually awake if it is it's maintained primarily in higher levels which is, which is why your essence, your true essence, is primarily in higher levels. And there's only a, a fraction of who you are that is here. But that's why that fraction that is here is then used to splay out in that filtration system. And that's the imposter, the kind of shadow puppet version of consciousness that is reflected through the experiences, the projections of consciousness, the identification with these portions or ideals or... Um, programmed behavioral responses and belief systems that don't actually reflect the self and that's why the the, the most prominent version of that the most developed and established ver version of programmed behavioral response and belief systems the establishment of what we call civilization in itself aside from the fact of bringing about the necessities okay the conscious identity version of that has no bearing on reality whatsoever the identity the civil identity of a nation or an ethnic or a religion or a cultural product basically that's weird um there's a bug um that couldn't be farthest from what is actually seeking expression and the the identityless observer essence that is actually or truly observing it couldn't be far 
farther. But then in that sense, it's, it's a kind of game because any identity, any concept, any definition is the farthest away from the truth that you could possibly get because it's, again, we're dealing with infinities or eternity. So any essence, or not essence at that point, but any definity, definity, what am I doing here? Any definitive quality of the self that is connected to this physical layer is infinitely, infinitely, infinitely separate from the truth, separate from eternity, because whatever is here is physically here. If it's physically here, it means it got here. If it got here, it means it's going to disappear eventually, one day, no matter if it's built out of stone or whatever. It's going to dissolve one day. That's what it's telling you. You look and you see rocks and you see an ocean made of sand that was once rock. It means it's all going to turn to dust one day. That's the whole point. Whether that's a day that goes on and on and on, or whether it's one day the sun explodes and everything melts on the spot. Okay, choose, pick your poison. It's the same thing. Well, kind of. <laughs> and so the idea is that... Uh, Nothing that is here can actually represent the whole. Nothing can actually, no one portion, no one defined value can actually be what truly is, okay, overall. And so uh, going any depth into a definitive quality of identity or pseudo-identity, ego, or, or civil identity is equally nonsensical in reference to the whole. But the point is, with that first layer of it not making sense or not being what it is, we're multiple layers deep. Which ultimately means you can literally let go of this layer, and if you know what you're doing, you can let go of all the layers all the way through. You can be one aspect of the system and be the whole thing. But um, again, numerology comes into play with that, and this grafted version of the, the so-called tree of life, where... Uh, Basically, there are only nine numbers in existence because you really can't, we don't have the concept for further than that. Maybe you can have that, but we don't have the concept for it. We go, we, we cut that short, and so this whole mind sphere is not developed further than that. And, uh, and if you double the numbers and try to, like, portion them out and say, well, you can divide this by this, and you get three here, or two here, or four here... You know, eventually you'll go and you'll see that 9 makes sense to be the most that you can go without having repeating divisions. That if you divide them all the way up, you get a certain amount of divisions in the 9, which is the, the 8. And then from there, basically the octaves repeat themselves. And as well, that one, you have to add one on the end in order to it for it to become even, if you will, or, or overall divisible. Whereas if you, you know, with a different number set, you get different responses. But, uh... But in the end, you know, it's weird because some will then say the 6 to 12 version is basically the old, uh, what people call the, the, it's a contrived system. I'm not going to say the names of the interdimensional beings or the religions or alternative, you know, views of what it is. But uh, basically that system was given to us because it is seemingly complete and connected to nature, but in that sense... It's part of a uh, fallen geometric system, uh, like a broken Fibonacci, a broken phi, 360 degree system, where uh, we have to have some added on or left over, and it has to be adjusted because it truly doesn't make sense in the long run. And if it doesn't make sense in the long run, it means between here and eternity, it's not going to make any sense whatsoever. Only a perfect system could, could actually be aligned with truth. And uh, so it's interesting, but again... That has to do with a slightly different version of, of this information dealing with numerology, uh, geometry, and the precision of angles and uh, the parts that add up to a whole where we're kind of looking at a, uh, a conceptualized version as far as identity, uh, maybe a philosophical version, although that's not. All these established uh, doctrines are just that. They're, they're a version of a, a way of excusing what can't be explained by turning it into a kind of a fun topic to discuss. Um, but even in that, you get you, they still coincide because you have the original or maybe the true source, and you have secondary deviations, and then you have you know a trinary uh, system that kind of undulates and creates what we consider to be time and the the uh, 
the higher and the lower and middle consciousness and, and the physical, mental, emotional, okay, so it breaks, it, it all connects. But the idea is you don't have to go that far, you only have to go two levels where you realize there's a true source that's constant and unchanging, and then there is a nearly infinite or infinite number, or virtually infinite number of deviations, derivatives from that which are temporary and can never actually align with the truth. And the point is we're in one of those now. The inner version of that driving the car, which is in between the actual or the, the true, not actual versions of what's actually happening or what's truly happening, is one of those artificial constructs. Consciousness in that way is a kind of holographic construct. It has to be explained a little bit more in depth, but the idea is that the it's, it requires a delay. It requires a delay. It requires a dimensional uh, a, a reflection, translation, or a mirror system, and that's all contained within the brain, within the body, that the light goes in, there's calculations processed, there's a delay, and then there's the impulse that the ego, the driver of the car, sees the, the tree going by, feels the engine accelerate and the, 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 the velocity increase after pushing the pedal. There's a delay, and in that delay, that is the nature of the projection system, that it's not actually happening when we think it is, or what we think it is, it's a computational system, it's, pro, it's a program basically. So the question is why are we in this program which looks like a body, looks like trees, looks like everything, but if you look close enough is atoms and these atoms function kind of like very, very tiny computer systems or very, very powerful brain cells which are doing anything but showing us what is actually there and in fact they're only showing us the reflections of what absorbs that truly is and shines back what doesn't get absorbed. And so we're only seeing the filtration of everything that is, the reflection, the shadow, the dimensional shadow of all that truly is, of the source of what once shined out and what we get back. When you go, when you, you use the external version of space and time, you get the same thing because where distance increases, the relativity of what is in terms of perception and meaning becomes so discontinuous or discongruent that it's meaningless. You can't access anything because everything's so far away. And anything you can see, even through the speed of light, is in the far past. And anything you can achieve or reach is, is so distanced, distanced that uh, you have to use technology to get there, which then neutralizes the whole purpose of life here. If you can make, basically, you can, you can move so far beyond the parameters of physical limitations of time and space that your consciousness is warped because of the nature of the craft that you're using, and what's the point? How does it all tie together? And so the consciousness from this level, it's based upon limitations, based upon separation, distinction, contrast from one the other. That's how the brain works. That's the only system that doesn't actually see the truth or doesn't see what's truly there. So it's an illusion system. It's a puppetry system. It's a dimensional projection. Um, this is a ramble. I'll determine whether it'll still be in the public or the private venue. Um, yeah, but it's all, like I said when I started this on the bike during the daytime, this is all from, it's hard to describe, it's from direct experience and it's from basically military protocols of how to survive when we enter these portal systems, when we, we shift into these other civilizations, which is what we actually come from. Meaning that the ego, if we're attached to the ego, if we're integrated with the ego, if we're identified with it, we splatter out like fractal geometric so there's like a shape, like a, not a buckyball, there's another word for that and I forgot it after I remembered like early last year or something. Not a buckyball, but there's a uh, buckyball, because that's the shape, a Hoberman expanding sphere, Hoberman sphere, where it's like the Legos or the, the uh, erector set and they expand and contract. Imagine spinning one of those but having one side lopsided with weight eventually just rips apart, or a tire where it's heavier on one side than the other. And so, you know, that's our system of energy, like a mandala, and the ego is always based upon contrast between one or the other. Where there's imbalance between the left and the right, that imbalance is represented as ego. So it's the strangest thing, but that's how it works, and so it all has to be balanced in order to go anywhere because the way of moving one place to the other is that ball spins up, and then it turns inside out and goes through a zero point portal inside of itself. Uh, meaning it contracts to the point where it hits so refined or, or a minuscule, a dimension of contraction that it eventually turns inside out like a parabola exploding inside out. 
which would be impossible, but it's technically mathematically and geometrically possible. And so if it's possible in theory, then it could be possible here. And the point is, your energy systems can do that. And if your energy systems can do that, your consciousness can do that. And if your consciousness does that, it enters into a new format of being, which is basically entering a new dimension. And uh, where the parameters of this dimension are no longer applicable, which is also related to those craft and those means of travel and all that happens when one goes from one to the other location, which is also what happened for you to get here. Just look at the birth process. It's that slowed down and turned inside out where you're now being born into a, or birthed into a physical, you know, system after being pieced together externally, you know, outward in. You do it from the inside out, if you will, leaving this place. Same thing. It's just kind of energetic. And it's all, it's all weird. It's all a projection system. Like the, the putting the hand into the puppet in a way sounds weird is a metaphor for what happens when the, the soul kind of goes into the other place. But the idea is there's a right way to do it where the identity is is kept in alignment and who you are now transfers through basically you keep your memories and there's a way that uh it, it 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 has too much imbalance and because things accelerate there's so much vibration eventually it shatters the structure and when that happens the memories cannot be held together and so the one that goes through that observational element goes through but it has no remembrance it has no connection to the you that was here and so and it's an important thing the the last thing i'll say here is that we've been doing this for eons this is the time where they figured it all out. They mapped it all out and they found out how to pull the civilization through and get everybody out of this. It's like a washing machine or bubbles that keep exploding and we're riding them, trying to stabilize ourselves, merge into eternity, harmonize the self, accelerate and step into full being within the time of one of those bubbles expanding and popping. And it's been going on for forever. There's no limit to the time. It's like tens of millions of years hundreds of thousands, depending on how you look at physicality and the different layers of it taking place. You know, is it one year of a thousand bubbles going off? Or is it a thousand years of a thousand bubbles that all take a year to, to implode, but are happening technically simultaneously? And so, uh, but that's the whole point that they mapped it out. And we are stabilizing enough to the point where if this, uh, if it happens, then there's a strong likelihood or a stronger that will be able to make it through to the other side. It's also in, in um, not maybes, it's uh, something that has to be, that must be, in essence, that it happens when we decide that it's time to, to make that truth take place, to, to make that occurrence a reality, because it's all a choice. It's all a choice-based system, and we're actually creating it kind of like a cosmic dream. But the idea is that in that view, we don't merge with oneness and become one with everything and dissolve. That's death. That's returning to the source. In that view, we become travelers, nomads in the cosmos, returning to a kind of home civilization, or in that sense, creating the vibe of a home civilization because we create the universe that we want to be in. And we're in total control because we've harmonized our ins and our outs, our karmic drag, the wake of time following behind us, influencing us kind of like a trailer where we're driving down the road, dragging weight behind us that's gonna wanna push us when we stop. It's gonna wanna turn that way when we steer that way. And we, we have to harmonize that and, and equalize the, the, the drag through time space to the point where we can more or less neutralize our impact. And it's as if uh, we, we dive, it's like diving the, a diver diving into the, uh, the pool and the surface stays perfectly calm or it goes through and then it, it's perfectly calm a second afterwards and the same exiting it. And it's as if we lift no imprint, there's no shadow mind, there's no sign we were ever there. It's as if we fully extract ourselves from this time space continuum that only seeks to continue to chew and, and in a way denigrate and uh, ultimately energetically degrade everything that's within it and recycle it. It's just like a big grinder or a recycler. That's the black sun. And it may or may not be because people invented that program and inserted it into the, the core of the, what you could call the, the galactic core, in essence to basically keep everyone down while they kept the passcodes so they could rule over everyone, which is a terrible idea because this is what happens. But um, but yeah, that was the idea. That, that it's just a simple, it's like, it's simple. It's literally a transition from here to there, A to B, it's mechanical, it's almost physical, but it's energetic, it's just perceived as a, you could describe it physically like you're turning inside out or you're going from there to there or parameters of speed are increasing then it's like being in a, a dimensional vehicle of your of your body but it is for a spaceship or a car or a craft or something and you have to guide it properly in order to enable travel or transfer from what we are in now into where we are are going or where we are from because the two might be simultaneous or uh 
coinciding. So, thank you.